Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'll share with you the three most common dead mistakes and how to correct them. Dips are perhaps the best exercise for building a strong and defined lower chest, and it's a must have for a chest workout. It's also the most popular push exercise when it comes to weighted calisthenics. If you don't already know, street workout competitions build around weighted dips and weighted pull ups, so it's important to get good at it if you want to pursue further in weighted calisthenics. In today's tutorial, I'm not going to cover the mistakes that are common and general to all exercises. These include half wrapping and kipping. Instead, I'll be addressing the problems that are specific to dips. There are three ways people usually do dips wrong, and I call them the swing dips, the elbow dips, and the arch back dips. Mind you, this is going to be a very technical tutorial, but I assure you that by the end of this video, you'll come to learn how to dip most naturally and strictly. The first common mistake is to swing during a dip, and I call this the swing dips. People dipping this way often maintain an upright posture at the top, but begin tilting on the way down. Then they make use of the momentum generated by the tilt to swing themselves up, just like a pendulum. The problem with swing dips is that you are letting momentum do all the work for you, especially at the bottom position where you are supposed to challenge yourself with the most resistance. You see, in a perfect dip, the degree by which your body tilts should remain the same throughout the whole rep. Most people make this mistake because they don't know how to open up their chest on the way down. Instead, they lean forward with their shoulders locked, and this causes their torso to rotate. To correct this dip, try opening up your chest on your way down, and don't lock in your shoulders. The second mistake is what I call the elbow dip. People often think they are doing a perfect dip just because their elbows are at 90 degrees. This can't be any further away from the truth. Check out these two clips. These people are merely flexing their elbows, but their hips have not moved down an inch. I think Small Spartan here has done a very good job in showing us how ridiculous and wrong this version of dip is. In case this isn't clear enough, he's just making fun of this move, can do full planche push up with ease. Ideally, in a perfect dip, the vertical displacement of your hips should be the same as that of your shoulders. In other words, your hips should go down as much as your shoulders do. But with this elbow dip, I only lowered my shoulders and not my hips. Instead of going downwards, my hips are going backward and stays at more or less the same height. So essentially I'm just dipping half my body weight. Dipping this way also makes your weighted dips much easier. And this is how most people cheat in competitions. To avoid dipping this way, remember to bring your elbows behind your back. This helps bring your shoulders to an extended position so you can prepare to flex them on the way up. Remember, dip is not a tricep extension exercise. It also requires shoulder extension and you can't work your shoulders by just extending your elbows. The third mistake is to arch your upper back on your way up. Check out these clips. These people are initiating the push by craning their neck and arching their upper back, as if they are doing a deadlift and pulling the weights up with their back extensors. Again, you are letting your extensors do all the work and not your chest and triceps. Well, it's generally okay if you are testing your one rep max or you are forcing your weight to a PR. But this shouldn't be the way you dip if you are going for reps. Arch back dips usually happen when the weight is too heavy for the chest to bear. So the triceps jumped in to compensate for the push. When the chest fails, the back extensors are quickly engaged so the spine can maintain an upright posture. If your neck extends, then your cervical spine will also automatically extend and your whole form will inevitably break. To correct this form, Take note of your head position. Your head should be looking slightly downward at around 45 degrees. Of course it's important to keep in mind those cues I've just mentioned. But to be honest, they're also hard to visualize and act upon. 
Therefore, I must suggest you guys to try out this corrective exercise, which is the almighty ring dips. There are three reasons why you should do dips on rings. The first reason is, when you're on the rings, it feels unstable and it's incredibly shaky. For this reason, you can challenge your small muscles around your rotator cuffs. Once your rotator cuffs become stronger, you'll be surprised how much heavier you can dip. The second reason is because the distance between the two rings are adjustable, meaning that at the bottom you can push the rings further apart for better chest activation. More importantly, your grip is also adjustable on the rings, meaning that you can switch from a supinated grip at the top to a pronated grip at the bottom. In other words, if you turn the rings out on your way up, you'll feel more chest adaption. Last but not least, it's simply hard to use momentum when you're dipping on rings. This is going to clean up your form and eliminate any swinging. So go ahead and try doing ring dips. I promise you they'll have incredible carryover towards your normal parallel bar dips. So this is it. If you like this video, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Peace.